What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and this is gonna be the third part in our customizing your Hack the Box Paired Edition with Ansible video series. And we're primarily gonna focus on Burp Suite and Firefox, not only because it's so annoying to always install those extensions, but this is a great place to learn about the Jinja 2 templating language and Ansible itself. Because once you know uh, J2, then you can really take your playbooks to the next level. So before we um, get into the whole Burp Suite and Firefox thing, let's just do a quick um, refresher on J2 or a 101 thing if you don't know it already. You're probably familiar with um, templating if you watch my videos just because of SSTI injections, but here we're actually going to be using them uh, legitimately, right? So you'll know the whole purpose of them. I'm just copying my playbook so I don't have to type these top three lines, but we can do um, tasks and then give it the uh, template task. I think I do a dash here, right? We can say name, um, copying, please subscribe, J2. And then template, we give it source and the file that we want. So I'm gonna go dev shm, we're going to create please subscribe dot txt dot json, or not json, j2. And we're gonna give it a variable. Um, we'll just do ansible user id for now, right? So we have this file. So we'll do the source is please subscribe.txt.j2. And then the destination is going to be please subscribe.txt. So when we run this playbook, I'm guessing you'll know exactly what is happening. If you don't, um, it's just writing my current user to please subscribe.txt. And we can also create a bunch of variables, right? So let's just say we're using J2 to create some uh, pastables, right? Maybe we have something like revshells. I think it's .net, right? Or maybe .com, like this. And we don't want the website. We just want to do this via J2 and get a reverse shell, right? We can assign two parameters, the IP and the port, and have J2 give us that output. So let us go back into our playbook and we're going to create a var section and we're going to call it IP 10, 10, 14, 8. And then the port is going to be 9001. So now in our J2, we can do bin bash dash C, then bash dash I, dev TCP, and put a variable here of IP and then the variable of port, zero at and one. So now, if we rerun our playbook, we're going to cat please subscribe dot text, and we have our IP automatically generated. Now, Ansible probably already has our IP in a variable, so we could have used the built-in, but that's besides the point, right? And this is gonna come in handy because we're going to create a list of Firefox extensions and use that to help populate some JSON. And we can get a little bit more complicated. So let's just call this Firefox plugins. And we're gonna say the first plugin we want is Dark Reader. And then the second plugin is, um, I think it's Foxy Proxy Dash Standard, which is the name of it. Let's just save this and we'll go to Firefox extension, Foxy proxy. Let's see, it is Foxy proxy dash standard. So we'll add the D there. Save this. And what we want is to edit our templating and we can say, uh, the bracket percent is a loop, right? So we can do for item in Firefox plugins and we can print the item. And then we can end the loop. So end for like this. And now when I run this playbook and we cat please subscribe.txt, we have those two variables. And we could even um, 
copy the whole URL. So let's do, let's see. I think it's slash add on. Uh, how do we, what's the link to this? Ah, download file. Let's see, add ons, Mozilla file. I don't want to say it's this. Hold on, I'm just customizing this real quick. It's been a while since I did this. I think it's slash latest. And then we can do foxy proxy dash standard slash latest dot XPI. I think this is actually where foxy proxy latest is. Yep, there it is. So having this URL means it's always going to download the latest edition of this. So we want to edit our thing. So please subscribe text J2 to have the URL. So we can just do a paste and then right here, we can do item and get rid of this. And rerun the playbook, cat it. And now we have URLs. And the one thing that we're going to be injecting, it's actually going to look a lot like um, a list. So we have to um, have commas but no comma if it's the last item because that's going to break JSON. So we can easily reflect that in Jinja2 by just doing a loop or maybe this Lambda or something. I forget exactly what the terminology is, but we're gonna say comma, if not loop.last. So what this means is we're going to append a comma to the URL if it's not the last item in this loop. Uh, did not exit. <laughs> so now let us run the playbook and cat please subscribe dot text. So it's running and there we have it. We have a comma here, but not a comma here. So this is pretty much all we need to do to start automating our Firefox install because the actual Firefox, um, what is it called? The preference or profile is a big JSON file and we can use that in our Jinja too. So let's go and grab that, which should be in uh, user share uh, Firefox. I wanna say one of the extended support release uh, distribution and policies.json. So let's just grab that file and copy it here. And we're gonna have to edit it slightly because it's actually going to be missing something we want. Um, there is, I guess this is stripped down. Um, if we go to their GitHub and search uh, Firefox policies, JSON template, let's probably pull it up. Uh, here we go. We can go to Mozilla policy templates and Linux policies. And this is gonna have every setting they have. I'm not gonna copy the entire thing, which I think is what the readme wants me to do, just because I don't wanna change too many defaults um, that Parrot has set, right? I just wanna do the minimal number of changes. But you can see we can like disable camera, microphone, everything here. Um, but there is a extensions and it's extensions, and then we install and give it the list. So let's just copy this, and then we'll go to our thing and figure a good place for it. So let's do vim, policies, JSON, and I'm going to, let's see, let's make it alphabetical. Let's go right here before Firefox Home. We can paste this in. And then we want to ginger to fi this, if that's a word, right? So we can delete all of this and then we'll put a new line. Whoops, want a new line here. And this is where we want the actual code. So let us cat, please subscribe text J2. 
and we can copy and paste this in here. So paste, that looks good. And I'm going to indent this a few times. And I don't think we want two of these. That looks better. So let's move policies JSON to policies JSON J2. And let's take a look at this real quick. Just double check it. Um, extensions, install, and we're giving it our loop. Okay. So let's go to main.yaml and we'll change this to policies.json.j2. And the destination will just be policies.json. We can do ansible playbook main.yaml. And now if we cat policies JSON, it looks good. Um, we have install and there's two extensions. Uh, oh, we don't have a close on a bracket. It opens it up, but it does not close it. So let's fix that real quick. Um, please subscribe text J, no, it's policies. And let's see. We don't need all those spaces. There we go. So now that's closed. Maybe I deleted that before. Maybe that's the piece I deleted. So Vim, policies, JSON, go to extensions. And that looks good to me. So let's go and attempt to deploy this, and then we'll create our um, role with this in. So I'm gonna go main.yaml, and we're going to change the destination to be user share Firefox dash ESR slash distribution. I think it's just one N, I don't think it's S. And we have to add a become, uh, is it yes or true? Um, let me go back to my, whoops, other playbook, uh, grep dash r become true, and we need to become method. I'm just going to look at this real quick. I always find myself referring to previous uh, playbooks. So become true, become method. Become true become method pseudo. Okay. And what I'm going to do is close Firefox. So we can do pseudo who am I? So we get this token. And then we can do ansible playbook main.yaml and offending line become true. We need to unindent this one time because uh, based upon the indent, it was part of tasks and it's not part of tasks. Uh, what did I do wrong? Does it have to go above? So name, or is it actually part of the exact task? That's probably it. Um, by part of the templating. There we go. So now it says it changed one file. So we can look at user share, if I can type share, Firefox ESR, distribution, policies JSON, and we see it wants to install two extensions. So let's open up Firefox and hope it installs. We have Foxy Proxy now, so that's been installed. And it may only install like one at a time or maybe Dark Reader has to be restarted. 
So I'm going to close Firefox real quick. We'll open it again and see if it ends up installing the next one. Uh, do I see it? We have Foxy Proxy here, but I don't see Dark Reader. Let's see. Where is extensions? History, add-ons and themes, extensions. We definitely don't have Dark Reader. I wonder if the URL is bad. Um, maybe there's no dash. Maybe it's just one word. Let's copy, go over to Firefox. Paste it. Let's get rid. It's definitely gotta be just one word, uh, no dash. I don't wanna go to the URL and like have you think I accidentally installed it manually. So uh, let's just edit this. Uh, we had put it in main.yaml. Dark Reader, Runner Playbook. We'll restart Firefox. And there we go, we have Dark Reader. So what this plugin is, um, if you ever see me go to pages and switch it to dark mode, all I'm doing is going to like Google and Control Shift A is now a hotkey to try to put the page in dark mode for us. So love having this extension just because of that. So now that we know all of this, um, I guess we can copy this into a role and then move over to Burp Suite. So let us get a parrot build. We'll do roles and I'm going to do Ansible Galaxy init customize browser. Going to go in here and then we can say um, suppose I didn't have a template directory. Make dir templates, dev shm, let's copy policy json j2 into templates. And then I'm going to copy, um, let's just take the piece that we want out of main YAML. So dev shm main.yaml. I'm going to add these vars into the vars folder. Um, template, language, probably defaults. V main. I think we don't put any indents. And let's go into tasks now. And we can add this. Actually, let's do firefox.yaml and we can paste our template. So let's move this back. And what we want to do is rename this to say updating Firefox policies for, I'm not even gonna say for extensions. We're gonna say updating Firefox policies. There we go. There's one thing that's bothering me. Do I not? I do have a virus folder. Um, and I cat defaults main, and we're going to move our plugins over into vars. Um, let's see. We can just move defaults main.yaml to vars. I think these are pretty much gonna be the same thing, but um, it's normally in the vars folder to hold variables. Not sure why. Okay, so that's restored. We look at vars. That looks good. Uh, templates. That looks good. Let's go to tasks again. Uh, did I not save it? Oh, it was, if we go in tasks, 
uh, we made it firefox.yaml. And the source, we have to update to be templates policies. And then in main, we need to include um, firefox.yaml. I think that's exactly how we did it. So let's add one more plugin so we can verify this playbook works. So I'm going to add Wappalizer. So let's open up Firefox again. And I just pressed Alt F2 there to um, hit that run application. Wappalizer plugin, I think this is it. Let's see. I'm gonna copy this. I think this is it. It says dash pro, but I think it's for profiler, not like a pro version. I'm gonna be sad if this is like pro version, I did the wrong one, but that should install it, right? Let's just go back, Wappalizer. This is what we want, I think. The extensions page, where was I before? Oh, that was Chrome. We definitely don't want Chrome. Um, there we go. So let's do v main.yaml and we can add a role for a customized browser. Okay. Pseudo, who am I? Let's get our token here. And we can do ansible playbook main.yaml. And we have an error. Does not like how we included firefox.yaml because I don't think I put a trailing uh, quote. So let's do v roles, customize browser tasks main, put that in, run it. And that looks much better. And we do have Firefox running, so I will close that. And let's see, we have updated Firefox profiles already. So let's do Firefox to open it. And we have Wappalizer. So that is um, how we customize Firefox. So let us now move into um, the next piece, which will be Burp Suite. And a lot of what we're going to be doing is actually based upon um, something that someone else has done, right? So if I go to galaxy.ansible.com and search for the Burp Suite role, let's just search for Burp Suite. It's going to be based upon this person's um, work. And the reason why I'm not using it verbatim is because I don't want to just copy it, change one template, and then like upload it to my repo. Also, um, I want to learn a lot from this, and hopefully doing it manually kind of helps you. But if you want your playbook to have like things to activate Burt Pro if you have a license, I would highly recommend taking out my piece and replacing it with this piece, similar to how we did the... Um, Gantt sign role where you just use the Ansible Galaxy to download this and make your own playbook, right? But this does a lot of really cool things. One of the um, big pieces is it's got a script. Let's just go through some things. Uh, this will activate it. That's not what I wanna look at. I think it's deploy extras. And we're pretty much going to rip the deploy extras command, but it's also got this one concept called auto burp.py, which starts it up in headless mode to grab like the CA certificate. And that is the easiest way I found to get the certificate. Um, well, this person found it. I was trying to do it a different way, but had a lot of trouble. Uh, they placed it in files. So you can look at auto burp.py and it uses something called pexpect, which is just the expect language for Python. It allows you to run something, C standard out and respond to it. So it's just like a bash script. Um, but you can see all the commands here. It's going to open up um, burp suite and pexpect, look for some strings. The strings it looks for are things like um, 
accept terms and conditions, license agreement, things like that. And it will always respond just yes to all of those questions. So after it does that, it will download the certificate key from um, localhost 8080 because Burp Suite is running. So we're just gonna create a bash script version of this because we don't need to activate Burp Suite Pro because we don't really show pro features in my videos. So I'm just going to ignore that piece, right? So the first thing is we have to start Burp Suite in headless mode. And let me make sure something is not here. Let's do find.grep-i. I think it's user pref that Burp Suite makes. Uh, Burp Suite has been ran before. So, oh, maybe not. Let's see, what is this XML? cd.java dot user prefs burp is this it yeah i think burp suite's been ran before because i think this is the actual ca certificate but i couldn't figure out how to take um let's just do it in a new let's see java user prefs burp prefs.xml I couldn't figure out how to get, well, there's a lot of data here. Come on, free extensions. Let me just use this scroll bar. Holy. This CA certificate. So if I copy this and then we go back to the other pane uh, let's just do dev shm v test.b64, paste it, base64-d. Um, if we just do file against test, it's just data. So this is the CA cert probably in some weird format, I don't know. But if we start it up Burp Suite and um, download the certificate off of um, port 8080, so let's just do this real quick. Um, curl localhost 8080 cert and go to dev shm, do file against cert. We see it is an actual certificate. It's a binary file, but. So that's gonna be how we grab it. Um, I'm going to delete the user prefs. So we start Burp Suite from scratch, hopefully. I think that'll work. So .java, uh, is there anything else in this? Let's just remove dash rm this, sure. So hopefully now when I start at Burp Suite, it will ask me for a license. So how we're going to do this is, um, See exactly where this is. We're gonna start it in headless mode. So we wanna copy this path and then we'll specify an argument and that's going to be dash D Java AWT headless is equal to true. So now Burp Suite isn't going to expect a GUI. Um, it even, it has a GUI, but sometimes when you do Ansible, the program wouldn't get it. So we wanna make sure Burp Suite knows it's in headless mode. And when we run this, it's now going to prompt us for the license on a terminal. So we could accept it here. And then after we accept it, Burp Suite is now running on port 8080 and it generated that CA certificate. Every time Burp Suite first runs, it generates that CA certificate. So that is definitely what we want to grab. So, well, um, yeah, that's what we wanna grab. We don't wanna just generate this, put this in a repo, and then everyone that uses it has the same CA certificate because that'd be a man in the middle nightmare because everyone would have the same CA. So if someone man in the middle is you and they know you use my repo, uh, they'd have the certificate where they could just um, intercept your data without you knowing it or decrypt SSL. So that's why we're doing it this way. So let's do that RM command again. Uh, not that, that would be very bad. Uh, it was .java .userprefs. 
and we can go to our playbook. Let's see. Let's just do a new window. So we're in here. We can go roles, customize, browser, tasks, and we can do, I was gonna copy this to burp.yaml. I don't even know why I copied it. Um, I always like starting with some blank things. So we're gonna say running burp suite. Uh, maybe we'll do downloading CA certificate. That sounds better. And then we want to run the shell command. And if we do this, it will execute um, multiple things. And shoot. I want to copy it to um, a directory and like user share, but my user doesn't have permission to it. So I think I'm going to have to use two different commands uh, because I don't want to use become because if I run become, it's going to execute burp as root and create the config in roots directory. So that's a dilemma I'm thinking about right now. So let's do a timeout of 15. User lib JVM, uh, what was that? Cat, which burp sweet. Just copy this whole line. I should have copied it from before. Copy this. See dash um, D Java AWT headless is equal to true. And then I'm going to pipe a file to this. Now I don't want to create a file on my desktop, so I'm going to do this bracket and then open and close parentheses, and we'll do echo y. So we're sending yes to this command. And then I will do an and sign. So hopefully it moves to the next line immediately. And after that, we can sleep. We'll say Burp Suite has 10 seconds to stir it up. Now right, let's do five. Five should be more than enough. And we can say curl localhost 8080 slash cert dash o c a cert dot d e r, and we'll save it in temp. We probably should give HTTP. So hopefully that works. So let's do v main.yaml. You can probably just copy this burp to dev shm. Cat main.yaml. Grab the first few lines. Okay. And now let's Ansible playbook burp to see if it works. Let's see. Appears to be in dev line five. Oh, we need tasks. Let's see, failed. So I don't think it likes how we're running this command. I'm guessing it really doesn't like the, um, whatchamacallit, the redirections, if I had to guess. I'm not using any quotes. So I wonder if we can just do bin bash dash C. Sleep five. I wonder if this is going to work. T 
do not think it likes that. Let's take a look at the command. I wonder if it's the ampersand and oh, semicolon. Let's rerun it. It's not like that. Let's try using the command module instead of shell. Um, sometimes this works. So normally when shell gives me those weird errors, I switch to the command module and I think this time it'll work. Let's see. It's downloading. That looks promising. Uh, we gave it a five second sleep and yep, it says it has downloaded it. So if I cat temp cacert.dir, we have the certificate here. So what we can do now is a second command to copy that. So do dash, we can say name and saying copying CA certificate to, um, we'll do local share CA certificates. Uh, that's in user. And I always try to work out of the local directories because these are where package managers um, don't touch files. This is where you should put things. At least I believe so. Um, so let's Google Ansible copy. I think it's the Ansible file command, right? Or Ansible copy module. Okay. So we should probably, actually, I'm gonna try something. Let's open up VS code. I wonder if autopilot will tell me what to do. It is loading. Files, won't have to open the folder. Let's see. We're in DevSHM. And we're editing Burp YAML, right? Yes, I trust the authors. Is this going to be smart enough? It says activating extensions. Uh, maybe not. Oh, there we go. Shoot. Um, I click something. That is exactly what I want. Okay. What if I do this? Oh, that's going to call that command. That's not what we want. Um, let's see. Name, copy. We do want to become true, become method pseudo. I don't like how this whole coloring scheme is wrong because I did not terminate that quote. So maybe we should just always be using um, Visual Studio now that we have autopilot installed because that may speed things up. So let's do sudo who am I? Password. So now we got the token, Ansible playbook, main.yaml. Oh no, we're burp.yaml. It's going to download the certificate. We probably should um, not do this every time. We need to probably add a when clause to not download the certificate if um, it already exists. And it looks like we have cacert.dir in our directory. If we do a lsla, that looks good. Um, I'm going to remove this though, because we probably want to name this burp or something, right? So let's go back here and we can say burp suite ca dot der. Okay. And now let's go up here 
we'll create a, another task. And this will be check if burp suite ca dot dir exists. Is it going to know? Autopilot pretty much does everything I want it to. So this is definitely the way to go. I did not know Autopilot supported um, Ansible. So we'll register burp suite. And then over here, we can say when, man, this is so cool. There we go. So now it should only do this step if this certificate exists or it does not exist, right? Yeah, exists false. So let's run this playbook again. Um, we renamed it, so it's probably gonna drop it in. So we're waiting that five seconds there. So I'm gonna run it again and we shouldn't see any changed. We see it skipped. So that is pretty awesome, isn't it? I hope you're as excited about this type of stuff as I am, but uh, we can copy this now to our playbook. Roles, customize, browser, tasks, burp yaml, paste, and let's unindent all this. So now we have the certificate. Um, we could now configure Firefox to have a point at that certificate. So I guess let's do that real quick. And that's going to be in our templates again. And if we edit policies, JSON, J2, we can add something for the certificate. So let's go to GitHub, the policy template, and see what we add. It is certificates and then install. So let's add this and we will have to change the certificate we want to add. So let us uh, go LS, uh, was it user local share CA certificates, burp suite ca.dir. So we can copy this, paste it in. And then let's make sure we have who am I done And we can now run our playbook of main and we need to definitely close Firefox. And we got here, so we've already hit the Firefox piece. So when I open Firefox, we should see if we have that extension. So let's do file settings, certificates, view, and I'm hitting P and don't see anything. Um, it should be after N and before Q. So it did not add. Let's do Vim. Uh, was it user, local? Oh no. Um, where's the Firefox configuration? Uh, user share. Then Firefox extended support release, distributions, policies. And we see it added, but I guess this isn't valid JSON because we have one item in this list and a comma. If I got rid of that, I think that may fix it. Uh, we're not root, so we can't edit that. So let us go back. So let's see, CD, roles, customize, browser, templates policies, let's remove this one comma. And we will run the playbook, maybe. <laughs> there we go. Uh, close Firefox, copying, adding, updating Firefox policies. I think that was what we called it. So run Firefox and let us hope that we got the certificate. Hit P and sweet, we have port swigger. So that should all be configured now. 
We edit trust. It can identify websites and mail users. So now that we have that, there's pretty much just one piece we want to do before we wrap up this video. And when we open up Burp Suite, let's just do that real quick. Um, that error message is fine. We'll need to, let's see, probably change the font size because this is for my videos. And we'll also probably want to install um, Jython and stuff so we can do extensions. So first, I guess let's focus on the font size. So if I go burp settings, let's do user interface display. It's set to dark. You can change the font size to 20. And I think that changes it for everything now. There used to be multiple things, but now I think it's just one. Um, let's do foxy proxy. Oh, we'll need... So the annoying thing with Foxy Proxy is I don't know how to um, automatically import a config. So we may have to do that for another video. Uh, let's do proxy, proxy type HTTP. We can do IP 127.0.0.1.80.80. Click save. And then let's use the proxy and try going to GitHub. Uh, we are intercepting. Oh, no proxy enabled. Uh, do I still have burp running in headless mode? It says LNDP, grep, 8080. It is. Let's do sudo kill-9-9284. Enable. There we go. So let's restart Burp Suite real quick. I just want to make sure the font size is also going to be 20 because that font size was definitely not what I'm used to. So we started proxy. That is definitely smaller than I wanted. Um, let's see, settings, user interface, display. Needs to be a different size. Let's see, I'm not sure exactly where that size is. And I may just hand jam it in from um, my other um, copy on my main VM. If I do user settings, Display just has 20. I definitely want to change the size on repeater window. Oh, well, I'm going to send it to repeater. OK, I just want to make sure I had control space as a hotkey. That looks like a default in Burp Suite now. But this font size is atrociously small. So I'm going to close this window. And Burp Suite puts its config in, let's see, it's that .java file, uh, .user preferences, burp, and prefs.xml, I think, right? If I do 20 here, let's grep dash i dark on this. It's not in this. Uh, let's see. So .burp Suite. Uh, user config community.json. This is what I want. So if I look at 20, we got font size 20 here. And above it, we actually have font size under HTTP message display. So I'm going to change that to be 28. And then we'll save this. And now relaunch Burp Suite. And hopefully that does it. Close, next, let's open this up. Then refresh, it hits proxy, and that looks what I wanted. Where is that in the new interface? Detach, help. Um, I have no idea where they moved that to, but at least we can still change it through this. 
So we probably will want to copy this user config community JSON into our repo. So let's do um, code, parrot build, roles, customize browser. And I'm gonna put in the templates because I think we still have to make one change that's in this file, uh, .j2. Let's go in this directory and look at it. And what we wanna do is look for um, Jython and JRuby. I'm gonna have it auto load these two things because these are always a pain to install and it's required for extensions. So since we're in the J2 syntax, we can just do the uh, variable path. I'm gonna create a variable called burp suite extras path. And then we will do, um, let's see, what do I wanna call this? Let's just see exactly how um, the other person did it. So if we go back to the burp suite role, um, we're pretty much copying this methodology. So let's go to templates, user config, and let's search for Jython. And it is extras directory and the jar file. So let's just copy this. We have Jython in. So copy this whole thing. And we'll explore exactly how this works. Because I remember this was pretty cool. So put that in. And then let's get JRuby as well. So paste that. So it's using a, let's actually go to the task. So we go to tasks, uh, deploy extras. It's using a loop. It's doing a lookup dictionary burp suite extras. So we should look at exactly how this is. So if we go back, let's go to, I think it's in defaults. So it's looping through this and that's what the if and the then is because we have a different file name for it. So um, if it is JRuby, then it's going to use this one. If it's Jython, it puts this name, right? So if Jython is in this, so Jython would be here, then um, it'll be burp suite extras directory, then extras jars dot Jython dot jar. So it'd be putting this name there. So now that that's done, let us create the variables we need. So I'm going to do file open folder and we're going to open the main folder that we're using. So right now we're in dev, whatever. We wanna go home, ipsec, code, parrot build, and open this. And then we can do customize browser. I guess we can put them in defaults because that's where this person put them. Um, I'm gonna put it in variables. So there's that. Um, they're also putting SHA sums. So if, if someone somehow like replace this URL, it's going to um, not validate because the SHA sums not going to match, which is pretty nice for security. So we added that. We also need to add, um, let's see, go to templates, the directory. So we called it, let's see, Python, Burp suite extras dir. So let's add this to a variable as well. Wait. 
Where did I just add? Main defaults. I left it in defaults. So we want to put the extras directory at user local lib burp suite. That'll be fine. And I'm going to copy this and we'll move it to vars. Okay. Now we need to do our tasks. So let's go to burp suite and we can look at how they did the task. So let's copy this. So we can paste. So it's going to create the directory and we have this being the same name, state directory. We don't have a burp suite user one. Um, also, we're going to need to become root. I don't know if the owner, if I have to own Jython. I don't think I have to, so that should be fine. We can do become true, become method pseudo, and we'll just get rid of owner and group. Because I really don't think we have to own these jar files. So I'm going to create the directory for burp suite extras. Then it's going to download the jar files. So URL. So what it's going to do is go into the variable. Let's just open to the side. So it's going to look up the dict. So every item here is this is going to be item. So item value URL. So it's going to first download this one, place it in the extras directory. The file name is going to be the jar. And then checksum is something that git URL has to make sure you downloaded what you thought you downloaded. So that should be good. And then the next thing they do is copy this, which we're not going to worry about we'll want to do the template. So dash name, um, copy, what is the template file? Burp suite community uh, config. Then template source, it's gonna be templates user community config, destination. This will be Ansible user ID. That's who we're running it as. Is that correct? That's not correct. Yeah. It's in dot burp suite. And let's just test this out real quick. That is a file, save that. So I think this is all done. So the last thing we should do is go in our tasks because I don't think this main includes burp suite. And we want to run burp before Firefox so it exports the certificate to the correct place. Okay. Now this is going to be the big moment of truth. Pseudo who am I? Password. Ansible playbook main.yaml. I'm going to let this run. And we failed. To download. My uh, error was burp suite user is undefined. So where do we have that? Right here. Uh, we can delete that.
Try it again. It's downloading the jar files. And we have an issue. We probably need to um, become here. There we go. Third time is the charm. It's downloading. Looks like that one downloaded fine. And home directory ipsec burp suite does not exist because we need to do slash home like that. I'm hoping the fourth time it works. There we go. That looks like everything is going well. So I bet if I run burp suite now, we can open it and hopefully we will have Jython and JRuby installed. So let's start with defaults. If we go to extensions, the app store, I'm going to try to add auto rise. Do we have that? Um, AU auto rise install. Be able to load B app. I don't know what that means. Let's see, Python environment. So it looks like we do have Jython and JRuby installed. So that all looks good. I don't know why it says fail to load B app. If I close and reopen burp, is the same thing going to happen? It's opening. Let's go over to extensions and it is not loaded. Fail to load Python interpreter. I wonder if this is because we're not the owner of the file. Um, let's see. We were in CD user local lib burp suite. Oh, we don't have read permission of the file. Uh, sudo ch own 644. I just put the wrong password in. There we go. That is correct. Load. Wonder if we're going to have to restart Burp Suite. Close. Yes. Uh, sudo ch own. Oh, ch mod. Shoot. <laughs> Uh, root, root, I did not have to reopen Burp Suite. Uh, chmod 644. That was a silly mistake. Open up Burp. Shoot. There we go. Start. Close that. Extensions. And there we go. Now we can load things. So that was that issue. Um, let's go to where we download it. So we download the jar files right here. And we're putting 640. Let's just do 644. So now we can read it. We can save that. And I think everything is good. So what we wanna do now is package this up and copy it to a fresh install of Parrot. So let's do tar cjvf parrot build.tar.bz2. That is tar it up. And now let's copy it to our other box. So I'm going to grab my IP and we'll do Python 3 MHCP server 
I'm going to go to this fresh copy and let's do a wget port 8000 parrot build tar bz2 tar xjvf parrot build go in it and we can see I have no customization. If I do change profile, there's nothing there. I don't have VS code. So let's just do Ansible playbook main.yaml and see what happens. Um, well, we need to do Ansible galaxy install dash r requirements.yaml first. And we also need to do sudo who am I? We have the token already. So now let's run main.yaml. And I'm going to speed up the video so we don't just wait and watch the grass grow. And it looks like we have an issue um, with the way Burp Suite was trying to download the certificate. If I run this again, I'm guessing it's going to work. Remember we did a p-kill on uh, Java before? I bet when I ran that with the command, it's just leaving Burp Suite running in the background. And that's why it works this second time, which is frustrating. So we have to figure out a better way to do this. But let's just let this go and then I'll modify the playbook and we'll call it a video. That's why we always um, test from scratch just because there's so many things when you're doing a build that you created a temp file for and because it created the temp file, it works the second time, but not the first time. And that's what is always frustrating. But I just wanna make sure Visual Studio Code gets installed before we decide there's only one issue we have to solve. So yep, only one issue we have to fix. We have to fix that burp sweet thing because playbook is done, but I bet we are still listening on 8080. So that's why it works the second time, which is annoying. We are no longer listening and we can remove, uh, what was it, dot config and uh, well, it was .java, sudo rm .java user prefs. There we go. And now let's go back to our box and I'm going to change this piece up, how we download the CA certificate because well, that's where the problem is. And we're going to have it actually um, just execute a bash script. So I'm gonna create a folder, we can do files, and then new file, and we'll call this git burp cert.sh. And then we can paste this in and convert this to just be a bash script. So like this, timeout 15, have this and fine, sleep five, curl, there we go. So we have the file git burp cert.sh. I'm going to put this on my clipboard because I don't feel like making a typo. And then we can go back to burp.yaml and I'm going to change this back to a shell command and we're going to execute dev shm get burp cert.sh. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't think it copies the whole playbook to machines before executing it. So if for whatever reason you weren't executing from local host, you should always preface or beforehand copy the file in a task. At least that's what I do. So we can create a new thing and this will be called copying burp script and the source will be files get burp cert.sh destination dev shm get burp cert.sh doesn't have to be owned by root. We can make it 744. I'm actually gonna make this temp. We'll put the file in TMP. Go here, TMP. 
Uh, we do not need to become root, but we also have to keep in mind we have to delete the CA certificate because these things will only get executed um, when the CA certificate's not there. So we have that. Let us go terminal, change back to this profile. Let's see, just a sanity check. Source, temp, downloading CA, King bash script two. Okay. I think this is all good. Let's remove parrot build tar cjvf. Parrot build dot bz2. Python 3 um, HTTP server. We have started it up. Let's go to a fresh build. Pseudo RM user local share. CA certificates. Burp suite. Let's remove these two parrot directories. Uh, we need to do dash rf, and then we can wget tar xjvf parrot build, and hopefully this will work. Uh, let's make sure there's no burp suite is not listening. It's executing a bash script to download it. If I run this again, we do see it running, and it failed. Uh, why did it fail? Burp Suite is still running, so we can kill Java. So command, if we cut this, I wonder if we just cannot use Ansible with all these redirects and we should use Python like the original script does. Created user preference directory. Unexpected end of file when matching temp get burp. Unexpected end of file. I wonder if we had to download the CA cert. June 18, 14. Uh, that is not it. So if I run get burp cert, let's just copy it from this error actually. Oh. That's actually good that it aired. We left a quote in that. There's hope yet for this. Pseudo rm dash rf parrot star. Um, that doesn't exist, that is good. Pseudo pkill java. That is stopped. So now let's just fix that one file. Get rid of that. Tar CJVF web server. Let's I think parrot build is gone. Let's see. I'm on parrot fresh. This is the directory I wanted. Wget. Tar. And let's do playbook main.yaml. And hope this works. So it's copying the config building 
executing bash script to download CA certificate. I like that it's pausing. That looks good. It's not killing Java at the end. It's got a timeout 15. I thought that would work, but maybe it doesn't. So what we're going to do is add a command to kill Java and then call it a day. So run this. I bet I could. Oh no, I need to become true here, I think. So do shell, pkill, Java, become true, become method pseudo. Hey, sorry for the sloppy edit. When I was doing the extra testing, um, I noticed the script wasn't exactly reliable. I also did not um, call the pkill Java thing killing Java process. I had left it as executing bash script. So that has been fixed. Um, I also went in here. This timeout really does nothing because I guess timeouts don't work because I'm spawning a new process here. Um, but the main thing I did was change sleep to be 30. It was five because Java programs can take a long time to start. So I think this will make it more reliable. So I'm gonna go over to this build where we haven't done anything. Um, I just did the Ansible Galaxy install. If I do VS Code, it's not there. If I go to terminal, there's no change profile. So this is a completely fresh thing. Um, I think I have the pseudo token. I don't, so let's make sure I have it. There we go. And now we can do Ansible playbook main.yaml and really hope this works. So I'm going to do SSLNTP. It's building code root right now. So five, four, three, two, one. It should finish code root. There it is. And now we're executing that bash script. Um, I'm going to grep on port 8080 and wait for it to start listening because this is where it was unreliable. And I'm hoping, there we go, it does start up. And it's still got probably another 10 seconds left on that sleep or so, but hopefully we see it um, move to the next step and not error out. If I go to the terminal, change profile is there, so we can already switch. Um, I have to close out mate terminal and reopen it for it to take effect, but there we go. It's installing the app repository. So, um, Pretty much everything is here. It's installing VS Code, which is the last step. I'm just going to speed up the video. And this should be the final thing. It is downloading and installing Copilot. And there we go. The uh, Ansible script has completed. If I close both these terminals, open up a new terminal, and I can go terminal, change profile to video, and we are back at exactly how my previous parrot was. If I do Firefox, we should start seeing the plugins installed. Um, I may have to launch Firefox multiple times. Sometimes I found it doesn't install all the plugins at once, I think, or maybe I'm just not patient enough. Uh, there we go, Wappalizer, Foxy Proxy, and Dark Reader. So it installed all of the plugins. Uh, we can also go check out our settings, go to certificate, and hopefully Port Swigger is right here. So we do have the Burp Suite um, cert on. So yeah, that's going to conclude this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you all next time.